How's it going everybody? Uh, this is Gary Anderson. Welcome to my art room. Uh, this is part one of a multi-part series. I don't know how many how many it's going to be. Uh, where I am drawing a piece for a, a the contest for the Artcasters group. Uh, the contest involves robots and if all goes well I'm going to do something very special with this painting and the first step is going to be to get the actual sketch down onto a piece of tracing paper. It's a lot like this except it's a little cleaner. Um, basically what I'll do is I'll draw onto tracing paper and then take that image and either photocopy it or put it over another piece of tracing paper with some graphite on the back and then just kind of trace over it um, and actually put the image down onto a piece of mat board and the mat board that I have is this guy right here so you can see I've traced out the outline and uh, eventually what I'll do is I'll take this and transfer it onto the mat board there. All this is, is it, it's actually a piece of frame, uh, mat paper for frames. Uh, I found a deal on Amazon and I basically just sewed that mat and We'll be using it for various projects. I think I got a hundred for, uh, it was like 40 bucks or something like that. So it was a kind of a good deal. Uh, if my head gets in the way, I apologize, but uh, that's just how it is. I also have my beverage of choice. I won't show who they are because I don't have enough money to pay them. Mm. So I guess here we go. Uh, I decided that I was going to run with Vincent from, it was a film called The Black Hole. And this is a film that came out in the early 80s, I believe. And it was a movie that was essentially Disney's answer to Star Wars. Um, and if you've been around as long as I have, I know I'm starting to sound like an old man already. When you've been around for a while, you know that Star Wars kind of opened the floodgates to a lot of sci-fi movies. Uh, once it came out, uh, every studio had to have their version of Star Wars. And uh, the black hole was Disney's answer, and it was an okay movie. I mean, I, as a kid, I really liked it. I mean, I had the the storybook and the soundtrack, and I even had a record uh, called "The Story of the Black Hole." And back in the day, before <laughs> before DVDs and videotapes and Blu-ray and whatnot, uh, you had no way of bringing that movie home. Really, you just had to go out to the theaters and see it and the answer to that was to take uh, dialogue from the film edit it down to about an hour and put it on a record with a narrator in the background kind of giving a play-by-play -play on the action almost like a radio drama uh, kids ask your parents about radio dramas so they were around back then to let's see so all I'm gonna do here is just kind of sketch out the body roughly based on my reference drawing a little bit about myself I am not a professional artist illustrator, graphic designer, whatever you want to call me, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I do it as more of a hobby. I've drawn, been drawing since I was about eight years old, and actually it was Star Wars that got me involved with drawing. Um, back in the day, 
when I found out that the Star Wars figures had come out, I would grab one from time to time. But the ones I didn't get, I would actually take a piece of paper and draw them out onto the piece of paper, then cut them out and use them as my stand-in figures. And uh, that was when you had to have imagination, <laughs> something that some people don't have all that much of nowadays unfortunately because everything is sort of handed to us but uh, but again I sound like an old man so I'm just gonna stop with that um, so the little bit about the black hole uh, I know that there was a um, I don't know how many times I saw it in the theater uh, but once it came out in home box office I actually videotaped it and had it on video and it's probably still on video cassette somewhere in the basement I uh, just moved in with my fiance last summer so I'm not sure exactly where it's at but uh, I watched it from time to time and, and, and as I got older you know it kind of got forgotten about and kind of set aside um, but about two years ago uh, AMC showed it and you know AMC is uncut commercial free and all that so it showed and it showed the original cinematic release I guess with the uh, prologue and it was like an you know, like a, a start to it where music would play and uh, it was a device back in the day that was sort of taken from you know theater where uh, prelude I think it was called where music would play to sort of indicate that things were going to begin the movie was going to start and I never knew that the original cut of the film had that sort of prelude in it, much like the original cut of Star Wars was not called Episode Four: A New Hope. It was just called Star Wars. So, let's see that I need to come down a little bit. I'm already getting it wrong, but as I've said, I'm not a professional, so I just have done it for a while. You'd never know it by looking at the me work. So I do want to start off also by saying, um, as of this videotaping, as of this filming, I have seven subscribers. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking a chance of subscribing to my channel. Um, you're always, I'm always welcoming more subscribers. Um, I'm relatively new. To YouTube I've had the my YouTube channel up for quite a while now a couple of years I should say it's not quite a while but a couple of years and uh, I just never really utilized it for all that much uh, I would put some I'm also a musician so I put some original music up there um, and you know, the videos were sort of few and far between. Let's see. There we go. But I never really utilized the channel uh, all that much. I also have a series out called Gary E. Sketch Cards, where every week I will draw a small piece of fan art on a roughly two and a half by three and a half piece of watercolor paper. And I will make a speed drawing of that only because I found that talking every week while doing that was uh, a little harder than I thought. You know, and even now, I, I, I don't talk much when I draw. I just kind of 
just kind of do it, you know? So, um, let's see what to talk about. So, so the, the, the black hole, uh, so AMC, it was on AMC not too long ago with it, it had its prelude and I watched it again and, you know, it's one of those movies that, you know, I loved as a kid and a lot, you know, I also loved Flash Gordon when I was a kid, uh, saw that, you know, not too long ago and, uh, it was something that only a kid would love, you know. Uh, it was kind of a silly movie, um, but it was, you know, it was fair. It just brought back some memories, which was kind of nice. Uh, but The Black Hole, when I watched it again, found it was... Uh, kind of an adult theme movie. There were some moments in it that were a little uh, kind of shocking. And if I remember correctly, I read on Facebook that um, it was the first... PG movie put out by Disney, you know, um, Maximilian, who was the villain robot, he was more the henchman, the villain was a guy named Dr. Reinhardt, but the villain had a henchman named Maximilian, who was this big red robot, and he had, um, can use rotating blades for arms and stuff, and, and, uh, he was... He was a rather violent bot when ordered to do so. Uh, but I found that the movie was a little slow paced, you know, it was a very, uh, took a long time for the action to sort of kick in and, you know, it, uh, once it did, you know, things uh, started happening rather quickly, but let's see. Uh, but uh, if you get a chance, you know, watch it again. Uh, it's probably at your local library if you don't want to pay for it. Um, I don't advocate going to your local, you know, torrent channel or whatever. But uh, that's just my choice. But, uh, you know, if you can find it at your local library or find somebody who's got a copy of it, uh, my VHS copy is lost, so don't ask. Um, mm, give it a watch. So, let's see. So this is going to be just a very sort of rough sketch. Uh, I'll tighten up the details in a little bit. Hope your week was good. Mine was okay, just a little busy. Um, a lot at work, a lot going on at work. Um, let's see, that's, oh, you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wanted to put out a video kind of just showing where I'm just drawing and uh, talking a little bit. I know when I look at videos online with other artists, I like watching their technique. Um, I will say, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't mind them talking about their technique. Um, but sometimes I will watch it with the volume down. So if you want to watch with the volume down or what have you, uh, that's totally fine. Do what you have to do. And uh, I guess I'll just cry myself to sleep. And there you have it. But I just... Okay, that's... Getting there. Kind of like where that's going. Let's see. So. There will be times where I probably won't say all that much. Bear with me on that.
So the reason that I draw out the preliminary pencil sketch onto essentially tracing paper is because the stuff is relatively cheap compared to illustration board or mat board or whatever the final drawing is going on to. Um, so if I mess up a, a drawing or a sketch or whatever, um, I'm not wasting the mat board, I'm wasting just the tracing paper which I can sort of live with. So that's why That's why I'm drawing this out on two tracing paper. Okay, so now let's see, that might be a little too far down. I like being able to sketch things out roughly because, again, it helps Sort of helps me sketch out where everything needs to go. Uh, I'm not the best at looking at something and doing the whole scale and everything. You know, when you, the old stories about when you see artists kind of hold their thumb up or hold their pencil up to something, usually scaling it, trying to get the size relation of, say, you know, the head and the body, which I can see in this, the head is a little too big. Uh, there are a couple things I can do here to kind of fix it. First off, I yes, do. There we go. I'll raise that up a little bit. But uh, I was talking a little earlier about started drawing when I was eight years old, drawing the Star Wars figures, and uh, since then I was I would draw any chance I got. You know, I blame I blame Star Wars for that because, like I said, I would do the figures and you know. And uh, like a lot of you probably watching out there in my generation, you know, George Lucas is kind of the reason that I sort of tried to nurture the creativity. Um, you know, there were art books, the art of Star Wars and that that came out and I would read those. And of course the comic books, I was a big comic book fan also something else you should know about me um, and when I read the comics I would try to emulate you know the artists artist style and you know it just when you were younger you I hate going into the whole back in the day, but you know, there was a time when you had to be creative and come up with things to do uh, when you were a kid. You know, it wasn't just, although I had an Atari, it wasn't just, you know, video games and stuff handed to you. So, okay, that's a little better. The scale is going to look a little better, I think. Um, but I basically took a boat ton of drawing classes in high school and I would take I took all the classes I could 
back then. And uh, I think I took everything but painting. I don't remember taking painting uh, in high school. And by the time I got to college, uh, I had studied. Uh, I wanted to be a musician. So I instead switched from visual arts to performing arts. And of course, you know, I'm making a million dollars as we speak, which is total sarcasm. You can't really see it on the camera. Maybe you can. Total sarcasm. Uh, I am totally not making a million dollars. So, thought I was gonna, but you know, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. What? Not doing horrible. So, um, but I took a bunch of drawing classes, and I've probably said that about five, six times. And, um, stayed with me, you know, I kind of, um, I didn't utilize it all that much in college, maybe from time to time I would do it. And then, uh, probably about three years ago on Christmas, um, I decided I was going to paint a picture for my fiance uh, for Christmas and I painted her a unicorn for her and uh, it actually turned out okay I dabbled a little bit in painting a couple of times before back in the 90s I did uh, three of the four Beatles and those are somewhere in the art room here, in the in storage somewhere, uh, which those actually turned out okay, um, better than I thought they were going to, um, and I kind of put it away again. Uh, stayed with drawing, got more into model making, which is something else I did as a kid. I actually had the Vincent model growing up and I put it together quite badly I might add you know I didn't bother to paint it or anything it just you know I was a kid at the time so I just kind of glued it together and uh, you know painted it with you know brush and really crappy crappy colors and that and uh, displayed him for oh man I must have been three, four months, and then started doing what we all did with our models and started, you know, playing with them and not breaking them on purpose, but because of, you know, I was playing with them, he eventually went the way of the dinosaurs, unfortunately. So, so this is turning out okay. I'm not sure... So the Artcasters group is a group on Facebook, and it is a bunch of artists, made up of a bunch of artists, um, who post videos on YouTube, and I believe it was coordinated by a guy named Jeff Lafferty, very good artist, check out his work, uh, Jeff Lafferty. Um, who did a series of videos and he kind of has a daily uh, daily hangout and uh, the challenge they, they have a challenge every month last month I guess or the last challenge was called 100 days of comics where you know every day for I think the unwritten rule was that you know for about a half hour a day or something like that maybe this was something made up by uh, the people who were involved or some of the artists that were working on it. Um, you work on a comic every day for a hundred days and then you, know, you sort of 
post video progress and uh, what am I thinking you post post your video progress and then uh, after the end of 100 days you kind of put the final product out there and uh, this one was a challenge that was brought up or a uh, the, the, the yeah the art casters challenge I guess you call it uh, that came out at the beginning of June, which of course it's called Robots, and uh, yeah, just do one piece, and I guess document it, and at the end of June, all the pieces will be put into a video and displayed. Um, on the Artcasters page, it put out on YouTube and that. There's a lot of good artists on the Artcasters. And, you know, it's a very supportive group. Like I said, check it out on Facebook if you get a chance. Um, and again, also, look up look up Jeff Lafferty. And, uh, there we go. My mini eraser. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the, if not all, the Arcasters group I think are made up of professional illustrators and artists. And I'm just very appreciative that they they took me on. You know, uh, it's a very supportive group. Uh, a lot of people post their work, and the other artists will, you know, maybe not so much critique, but uh, you know, give their support. And there's a lot of good work. Um, I know that. You know, I'm no gift. I mean, anything I put up is always open for critique or criticism and that, which, by way of shameful promotion, if you like this video, please comment below. And uh, if you have any recommendations on any of the pieces that you see, feel free to leave a comment. If you like what you see, please like it. Subscribe to my channel. End of commercial. So this is about where I want it to be, I think. And I apologize if I'm rambling. Uh, like I said, this is my first video with commentary. Uh, I tried doing another one before. I was working on another piece um, and I realized about 45 minutes in that I really had not made any progress whatsoever and it was just me yip yapping and not really doing anything so that sort of went by the wayside so that sort of went by the wayside but I figured I want to use this as the first piece. Um, I'm going quickly here because I want to get this squared away. So I can go into phase two, which again is probably going to be which is going to be very special, actually. You're going to have to stay tuned to part two and watch how I transfer, uh, hopefully, um, the sketch onto the mat board. So, yeah, I tried doing another kind of uh, video where I was working on another piece and 
had it all produced and all ready to go and it just like I said was just kind of just didn't uh, go anywhere kind of like my train of thought at the moment but uh, so I scrubbed it but I kept the, the template so I'll be able to use that for this particular video. Let's see, does that look equidistant? I think that looks about equidistant. Mm. So yeah, all the all the proportions are not going to be a hundred percent accurate, but. Maybe that's a good thing. If I get in trouble for any kind of copyright infringement, I can just be like, no, 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 it's totally not Vincent from the black hole. I guess I'll have to beep that part out, but it's totally not Vincent from the black hole. The proportions aren't right. It's, it's you know, something else completely different. So. So let's see. So if you're watching this just as kind of a ride along or something to have in the background or something while you're drawing or doing whatever you're doing, thanks for watching. And everybody, thanks for watching. But uh, there we go. Let's see. But uh, as I've said before, this is my first full on video with narration. And, you know, just in all fairness, if you see anything I need to change or work on, keep in mind it's a first episode. Uh, also, I gotta work on keeping my erasers from falling, is what I need to work on, and keeping my fat head out of the picture. Put that over there. Um,. So this is going to be that moment where I may not talk all that much, so bear with me. There we go. That's, that's looking about right. Sometimes my OCD will kick in. Everything has got to be just about right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Oh, okay. Back in the drawer you go. That's it. Dropping all kinds of crap. So something else about the about this movie for everybody who saw it. Uh, It was, again, it was put out by Disney. There were a couple moments in there that they really, really tried 
to make sort of the iconic moments in the film. Uh, the first was the, the black hole effect itself, I mean, which looked pretty cool back then, you know, regardless of, you know, whether or not they may have, I don't know, took liberties with the science behind black holes and what we know now. I mean, you gotta remember, didn't know a whole lot back then. Um, the control room, first off, the, the ship that the main characters get uh, find, they find a derelict ship. If you haven't seen it already, I'll just explain a little bit. So basically, the good guys find a derelict ship out in space. Um, it's on the edge of a black hole, the edge of the gravity field called the Event Horizon. And it's basically a huge ship made of glass, which I suppose looking back at it now, man, there's there's no way a ship like that would have survived out in space. I don't know. I'm not a a uh, rocket scientist, obviously. But uh, one of the iconic moments was that ship, and uh, you know when it turns its lights on and everything, and it's just huge and it's beautiful design. It was really well designed. But uh, that was one moment when that ship kind of pops on. And another moment is toward the end of the film, kind of toward the climax of the film, where everybody's trying to escape. And, you know, the, the ship is going into the the black hole, uh, there's a meteor that crashes into the ship and comes barreling down this hallway that the uh, protagonists are trying to get away, the good guys are trying to get away, and it just completely rolls down this hallway and it barely misses them, spoilers, barely misses them which again, looked absolutely fantastic back in the day. No way that would happen. No way that would happen now. We all know a little bit more science type stuff. And we all know that the asteroid or whatever you want to call it, uh, would have just basically tore through that ship in the blink of an eye. End of story. It would not have rolled down the aisle, it would not have, you know, you would not have been able to just barely escape it. It would have just come crashing through, boom, done, roll credits. But it's still, it was one of those moments that they think they really tried to mark it as a key scene in the movie. Uh, and it was really cool back in the day. You know, I'll remember that scene. I remember it now, matter of fact. But, uh, obviously. So, let's see, I think that's how that goes. So this is coming, this is pretty close to being finished here. Let's see here. Um, but the Sentry Robots, that was the coolest part of that movie, were the Sentry Robots. They didn't move all that great, but they were, they were basically, these robots had these double double-barreled guns. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Had these double-barreled guns that, uh, laser guns, because everybody had to have laser guns back then, because, you know, Star Wars. And, uh, they took these double-barreled laser guns, and and, uh, you know, they would kind of move robotically, you know, very sort of and, uh, you know, obviously they were the security force on the ship, although the bad guy was the only guy really left on the ship, so I don't know why he had a security team, unless he had the security team on the ship initially. There were more 
crew on it initially, but without spoiling it for you, they met a rather dastardly fate. So, let's see, I think that's... So, I still have the soundtrack somewhere. I wish I knew where it was, but... Well, I do know where it is. It's in my... Uh, you want to talk about another throwback? I have the album of the soundtrack. And again, the story of the Black Hole. You might be able to find... You'll definitely be able to find the soundtrack on YouTube. You might be able to find the story of the Black Hole on YouTube. Uh... If you look that up and listen to a little bit of it, you'll see what I'm talking about with the uh, sort of the story records I was talking about early on. Let's see. Mm. All right. Like I said, I don't mean to rush, but I'm kind of getting... To the point where sketch is almost done. And Put the laser gun in here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I was pretty much a nerd when I was a kid. All the movies I'd watch and, uh, you know, some of the drawings and stuff. The drawing, though, was kind of a nice out because even though I was a nerd, I could draw and some kids thought I was actually pretty cool. So instead of, you know, uh, picking on me or whatever too much, they would be, you know, They'd be like, yeah, nice drawing, you know, nerd. Then they slap me around or whatever. Not too hard, but. So, in a way, this was sort of the way that I got out of getting, uh, I don't know what the equivalent would be of uh, getting thrown in a trash can. I wasn't picked on too much as a kid. I probably deserved some of it. I was kind of excited about all the wrong things. Uh, growing up. I mean, nobody deserves to get bullied around or whatever, but I think I just sort of opened myself up, you know. If you put me in a room with, you know, a hundred other people and the one bully that's kind of like, I need to find somebody to beat up, I think I would have just stood out like, like a sore thumb, you know, with some of the stuff that I liked as a kid, so. So this is coming pretty close. This is going to be done here in a minute. So, so there it is. All I gotta do is really put in the, let's see, put in the text. General shape for the text here. backwards Ugh. Almost there. Let's see. Yeah. Keep that like that. 
All right, getting close to the end here. Just maybe a little bit of shading. And uh, I'll be finished with the video once again. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Um, thanks again to the Archicasters for putting out the robot challenge. And like I said, once again, if all goes well, hopefully part two will have a very special guest. And uh, I'm going to spoil it, so we'll just leave it at that. Let me sharpen up the pencil again. Maybe I'll do the... Eyes wrong. Now I'm shading this because I want to get an idea for how the shading is going to look. On the final piece, on the final painting, so I know this is just kind of a, a sketch piece, but uh, it's good to know where everything kind of lies uh, shadows, mid tones, this, that, and the other. Um, so There really is no right or wrong way to do a piece. If you like it and you think it looks, you think it looks good, then run with it. You know, that's, that's my philosophy. If other people don't like it, well, depending on why you did it, that could, you know, you can just sort of write it off. Uh, you know, if you're, if this is your life, uh, you know, if you're a graphic designer by trade, you may not be able to write it off so easily, but, you know, in either case, really the best you can do is just try to improve, you know? artist, as a musician, you know, as a painter, you know, I'm always a you know, model maker, um, I'm always trying to better myself, I guess, I'm trying to one-up the last project I did, you know. Okay, let's see. Now the repulsors, or whatever these were, whatever these are, are full on black, so, let's see, let's just dark them in here, okay. Sorry for constantly sharpening the pencil. close to the edge here we're getting close to the end not the edge not quite at the edge yeah there are days but 
not quite to that point. What is he even talking about? almost done here so once again thank you for watching uh, this is going to be the end of part one and uh, stay tuned for part two if you like what you're seeing please like the video subscribe to the channel all those good YouTube euphemisms whatever you want to call them YouTube euphemisms I don't know I don't know what I'm saying um, yeah, like, subscribe, share the video. Uh, this will be posted on the Arcasters site on Facebook. And uh, that is Vincent from the Black Hole. And uh, so the sketch is done. Now to transfer it onto this piece of backboard and maybe get a color paint out of it. So uh, take care. See you next time. And uh, remember, your art's important. Uh, remember to take pride in everything you do, whether it's art or life or what have you, and uh, I will see you again next time.